ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد <coughs> my dear brothers and sisters from time to time the cdc or center for disease control and prevention they make a public safety announcement warning the public about disease and danger for the general welfare of society and because we've been talking about the diseases of the heart in the past several weeks or I'd say the past two months today I would like to make a similar announcement but instead of calling it a public safety announcement I would like to call it a spiritual safety announcement that there is a severe heart disease that is plaguing the Muslim ummah more severe than any of the other diseases that we've been discussing in the past several months destroying lives rendering good deeds in vain and ruining their reward in the hereafter a disease the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned his companions about and that warning would reach us through the authentic chain of narration there was once a a tabi'i one of the followers of the companions named natil ash-shami and he came to abu huraira radiyallahu anhu one of the closest companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says ayyuh ash-shaykh hadithna hadithan sami'tahu min rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us a hadith that you heard from the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam this was a common question and a request from many of the tabi'in the followers of the companions that were not alive to witness and be in the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they still wanted to hear what he had to say and they would ask tell us something that you heard from the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam and so abu huraira radiyallahu anhu who was the number one companion in terms of narrating a hadith thousands and thousands of hadith abu huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated some say over 5000 hadith or more so he had a wide selection to pick from he could have picked any hadith to fulfill the request of this tabi'i from palestine but he chose one and he says sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul إِنَّ أَوَّلَ النَّاسِ يُقْضَى يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَيْهِ رَجُلٌ إِسْتُشْهِدَ He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the first of mankind to be taken care of on yawm al-qiyamah is a man who was martyred فَأُتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ نِعْمَهُ فَعَرَفَهَا So this person will be brought this martyr the one who has given their life in the way of Allah azza wa jalla will be brought and will be made known and aware what the blessing that he had what it was and then it will be said fama amilta fiha what have you done with this blessing qala qaltu fika hatta stushhidtu 
He said, I fought for your sake until I was a martyr. قَالَ كَذَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّكَ قَاتَلْتَ لِأَنْ يُقَالَ جَرِيءٌ And it will be said, you have lied because you fought so that you would be called courageous and brave. فَقَدْ قِيلْ And it was said just that about you. It was said that you were brave and courageous. ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ حَتَّى أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ and then it was ordered that this person be drugged on his face until he was thrown into the fire. billah. After that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Warajulun," he said, "Warajulun, ta'allam al-ilma, wa'allamahu wa qara al-Quran, fa'utiya bihi, fa'arrafahu ni'mahu, fa'arrafaha. Qala, fa'ma amilta fiha? Qala, ta'allamt al-ilma, wa'allimtuhu, wa qara'tu al." وَقَرَأْتُ فِيكَ الْقُرْآنِ So this person, the next one, was a scholar. Someone that studied Islam and read the Qur'an. And he was brought in front of Allah And it was asked, after making him aware of the blessing that he was given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge, it's not obtained by our own hands, but it's from the success of our Lord. مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ The Prophet sallallahu he says, whoever Allah wants good for, then He grants him understanding of the religion. It is something that is only in the hands of Allah a ni'mah. And so this person was made aware of their blessing, and they knew and they understood what it was that was given to them. And then it was said, what did you do with that blessing? And the person says, I learned, and then I taught. And I read the Qur'an for your sake. And then it will be said, كَذَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّكَ تَعَلَّمْتَ الْعِلْمَ لِيُقَالْ عَالِمٌ You have lied. Because you learned. So that it will be said about you, he's a scholar. وَقَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ لِيُقَالْ هُوَ قَارِئٌ And then you read the Qur'an so that it will be said about you, what a beautiful reciter. He's a reciter of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the same fate will be his. It will be ordered that he will be drug on his face until he is thrown into the fire. And then finally, the third person in this hadith is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, رَجُلٌ وَسَّعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَعْطَاهُ مِنْ أَصْنَافِ الْمَالِ كُلِّهِ a man who was blessed by Allah and given every imaginable type of wealth, money, riches, and it will be said, فَمَا عَمِلْتَ فِيهَا What did you do with it? And he says, مَا تَرَكْتُ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ تُحِبُّ أَنْ يُنْفَقَ فِيهَا إِلَّا أَنْفَقْتُ فِيهَا لَكَ I haven't left one path one thing that you love for wealth to be spent in its cause, except that I was there spending. I was giving my money left, right, and center for every cause that ever came in front of me. And it will be said, كَذَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّكَ فَعَلْتَ لِيُقَالَ هُوَ جَوَادٌ You've lied. You did that so that people would say you were generous with your wealth. فَقَدْ قِيلَ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ ثُمَّ أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ And all of that praise was given to that person. Just like the other two. People said that about them, they praised them. And then they were brought and it was ordered that they be drug along their faces and thrown into the fire. وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ Brothers and sisters, this disease, it is called الرِّيَاء. Arya, as Ibn Hajar al Askalani rahimahullah defines this for us in Sahih al Bukhari in his explanation of this book, it is making something which is for Allah al Ibadah, making it apparent and public so that people can see you and that they will praise you for it. Doing something in public, there's nothing wrong with that. We're praying in public. Our lives are public for the most part. 
But when your intention is directed not to Allah for something that is specifically legislated for Him, <coughs> sacrifice, prayer, charity, learning, reciting the Qur'an, and to the end of it, the list goes on. When the intention is directed so that people will praise you and speak highly of you because of that, it is called ar This is one of the most deadly diseases. The Prophet wasallam, in fact, he said that he feared this most. In an authentic narration on Mahmud ibn Labid, radiyallahu anhu qala, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أخو فما أخاف عليكم الشرك الأصغر. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says the thing which I am scared or fear for the most for you, the followers of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. For us, it is الشرك الأصغر, the minor shirk. Now many of you may be aware that in Islam there is something which negates your iman. Something that which nullifies your belief in Allah It contradicts the true belief of the Muslim and that's called shirk. It is to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either to do it in a major way by saying that there is two deities, two gods. Or through another means by worshipping someone else or prostrating to something else or worshipping a grave or a man or a creation. This is called major shirk, shirk al-akbar. Here the Prophet wasallam is afraid of shirk al-asghar, the minor shirk. And the companions, they say to the Prophet wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, wa ma shirk al-asghar? What is this minor shirk? And he says, ar It is this disease of showing off to gain praise, to direct your intention for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he goes on, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَقُولُ يَوْمُ تُجَازَ الْعِبَادُ بِعَمَالِهِمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day when He will be rewarding people for their deeds, He will say to them, those who fell a victim to this riyat, this disease, إِذْهَبُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ كُنْتُمْ تُرَاؤُونَ بِعَمَالِكُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَانْظُرُوا هَلْ تَجِدُونَ عِنْدُهُمْ جَزَاء he will tell them, go to the people that you were trying to show off to, that you're looking for praise. On this day, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, on the day in which the reward is given by me, Allah Azawajal, go to them and see if they have any reward to give you. Because it was for them that you were doing those deeds. It was for them that your heart was directed, and it was not for Allah Azawajal. Will they be able to reward you? Will they able, be able to repay you for what you did? Kalla wallah. There is no possible way. Themselves are looking for a way out. Not helping others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this disease, ar in the Quran. In a very beautiful parable. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu la تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَذَىٰ كَالَّذِي يُنْفِقُ مَا لَهُ رِيَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ سَفْوَانٍ عَلَيْهِ تُرَابٍ فَأَصَابَهُ وَابِلٌ فَتَرَكَهُ صَلْدًا لَا يَقْدِرُونَ عَلَىٰ شَيْءٍ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what's translated to mean O oh, you who believe talking to us the believers in Allah and in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى Do not render your sadaqah, your charity, in vain. Do not ruin it and spoil it. From what? بالمن والأذى Reminding people of what you did. Reminding them how much you gave and when you gave, and why you gave, and why they should appreciate what you did, why they should praise you and hold you up in high status, or harming them in some manner. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, like the one who spends wealth to be seen of mankind, riya and nas, they just give money, so that people can say like in the first hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
innahu jawad. He's generous. He is kind and gives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on and he says, throwing us or giving us a parable. And he says, his likeness is the likeness of a smooth rock on which there is light or a little bit of dust. And it falls a heavy rain onto this rock and leaves it bare, washing away that dust. When you look at the tafsir of this ayah, many of the great scholars of the past and the present, such as Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'di rahimahullah, he says that in this parable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prohibiting us. And this is the amazing thing. The most merciful nature of Allah Azza wa Jal. That He's prohibiting us from rendering our own deeds null and void. He's prohibiting us from ruining our own reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our actions or our deeds. He does not need to give us reward, but He wants to. And in order to see that to the end, He has made it a prohibition, haram, for us to do anything that would render those deeds in vain. And He says in this ayah, what is understood? That as a believer, we should be doing anything and everything to safeguard and preserve our good deeds. And that when you look at this Sadaqah, giving in charity, as it's mentioned in the ayah. This is a representation of any type of good deed. And that good deeds can be lessened or even wiped away by evil deeds. Here in this ayah, it's referring to someone that has already given Sadaqah. That they have already given it, and it was for the sake of Allah. Azawajal. But later on, بِالْمَنِّ وَالْأَذَى After they had already done it, after their heart was pure for Allah Azza wa Jal, then they began to remind it, and this is considered to be a sin. And this type of sin will remove the good deeds that you had done previously. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the one that does that is just like the one that does it for the sake of people 100%. There was no intention for Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning, in the middle or the end, but it was for mankind. For the creation. So he says it's like a rock. A smooth, solid rock. The rock is, as you know, impenetrable. Dust does not settle inside the rock. Dirt does not go inside the rock. It stays solid. And this is a parable for that person's heart. The person that is a victim of these diseases, it is their heart that is like a rock. It is solid. It is hard. Asiya, it is impenetrable. There is no benefit in it. But for the onlooker, when they see this rock covered in dust, it is like us looking at someone and we see their good deeds and their good actions and we assume that there is some benefit in this person. MashaAllah, they're generous, scholarly, beautiful brother or sister. But when the reality is made clear, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects us and makes things known, the heart will be just like that rock. Nothing is on it. There are no good deeds that stuck to it. Nothing will benefit it. And for that reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic hadith, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُّرَكَاء عَنِ الشِّرْكِ مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِي غَيْرِ تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكُهُ He says, I am the most lofty or the most without need for a partner. So whoever does a deed and they associate someone in that deed with me, then I will leave them and that deed and those that they associated with. The deeds, they're gone. Just for a moment, if you could imagine something that we are constantly battling with and the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu constantly complained about this issue for themselves. The difficulty of maintaining a sincere intention for Allah Azza wa 
that when you're standing in the masjid, when you're standing for prayer, you have to ask yourself, is it different than how I stand at home by myself? If I do that at all? Are my prayers different in the public than they are in private? Am I standing longer, making ruku longer, making sujood longer, saying tasbih, alhamdulillah, more, louder, in public so that people can look at me and they can say, MashaAllah, Abid, a servant of Allah. And that when I go home and I'm in private, there's nothing that happens. This is the warning of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسانا إلى يوم الدين وبعد Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu, as you all are aware of, one of the greatest companions of the Prophet sallallahu and from Al-Bayt, from his family, he described this type of person, Al-Murai, the one who does things for the sake of mankind. The one who does acts of worship, not just anything, we're talking about specifically deeds and actions that are for Allah, religious deeds. And he says they have three signs. Three signs, and these are like symptoms. Three symptoms. When you have a disease, it's diagnosed by the symptoms. Runny nose, earache, cold. Then the doctor can give you what the disease is based upon that. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, there are three symptoms for this mura'i, the one who does these types of actions. They are lazy when they're alone. La salata wa la sadaqah. When they're by themselves, they become lazy. But when they're around people, they become very energetic. They go the extra mile when people are watching. It motivates them that someone would see them and have them increase in what they're doing. And then the third symptom, it is a combination of the two. That when they are praised for what they did, when someone tells them how good of a job that they are doing, they increase even further. That that praise will give them more motivation because they're happy to be praised and to be talked about in a good manner. And if they're not praised, but they're criticized, it goes down. Here, that rock covered in dust that looked to us like fertile land, crops would grow upon it, there would be benefit from it, the rain has fallen and it has been laid bare. It has been made known that this is riyat. And this is a form of hypocrisy. Some of the great scholars of the past, they even call it riyat, the person that is mura'i, the one that takes part in this, dhul wajhain, a person that has two faces. That it appears one way, but on the other side, there's something very different going on. So when you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the way that he encouraged his companions to behave and to act, he encouraged many of them to do things in private and in secret. In fact, you'll see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic narration found in Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ذِلَّ إِلَّا ذِلُّهُ That there will be seven people that will be shaded on a day when there is no shade but the shade of Allah is wajal. And from those seven people, رَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَا شِمَالَهُ مَا تُنْفَقَ يَمِينَ That a person will give in charity and that they will hide it so well that the left hand will not know what the right hand gave. Not your wife, not your child, not your friend. That you will give charity in such a secret manner that no one will know who did it. And then he says, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَا And a man who remembers Allah when he's alone in private and he begins to weep and to cry in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His glory and His magnificence and His power. 
When you are alone, that's when the true sincerity shines. There is no one to motivate you otherwise. It is only you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moments that you spend in the dark, the moments that you spend quietly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration or another hadith, he says, Sallu ayyuhan nas fi buyutikum. O oh, people, pray in your homes. فَإِنَّ أَفْضَرَ الصَّلَاةِ الْمَرْءِ فِي بَيْتِ إِلَّا صَلَاةِ الْمَكْتُوبَةِ Pray in your homes because the best prayer of both the man and the woman is in the home. Except for the obligatory prayers. Why do you think that is? The Prophet ﷺ, he says, صَلَاةِ الْجَمَاعَةِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صَلَاةِ الْفَذِّ بِسَبْنُ وَعِشْرِينَ دَرَجَةِ That the congregational prayer is better than the prayer alone by 27 times. Because the prayer that you do at home, it is private. It is secret. No one sees you doing it. No one judges you. No one praises you. The only motivating factor that you have for doing it is for the sake of Allah And this goes with all of our deeds. All of our good deeds done for Allah In order to preserve them and to safeguard them as commanded by Allah La. تُبْطِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ In another ayah, do not render your deeds in vain. It is to protect them from arya, from showing off, so that we can gain some type of worldly praise. So brothers and sisters, I'll conclude with that and I ask Allah to purify our hearts and to guide us to the straight way and to keep us firm upon it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid وآخر دعوانا إن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة